officer here at Hardin County Schools. Thank you all for joining us today here for Impacting Learning, Empowering Students. Uh, with us today we have Ms. Holly Sexton from Abound Credit Union. So Holly, thanks for being here with us today. Happy to be here and we're six feet apart. All right, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and remove these masks here today so you all can actually see us talk here a little bit. So uh, we've been doing these segments on impacting uh, students empowering learning here over the past uh, five or six months. And this is a, this is a very important uh, session for us here today because uh, 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 Holly works for Abound Credit Union uh, we've developed a great partnership with them over the last few years here with Hardin County Schools and specifically toward financial literacy, which is our topic here for today. But really, I kind of want you to get to know a little bit about Holly. So Holly, just kind of tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe a, a brief statement about a bound credit union and a little bit about uh, you know your business and what you do. So. Sure thing. Well, thank you, first of all, for having all right. me on your show. I'm usually in your seat. Right. In your <laughs> seat it's a so. role reversal today. It is. I sure. like it. Um, and, and it's so good to be here. And yes, I'm proud to represent Abound and to be able to partner with you and with Hardin County Schools to provide financial curriculum, financial literacy curriculum, and also financial wellness. Because as we dig a little deeper and I work with Shamika Hardin and other people within the district, I'm mm -hmm. learning more about the whole person and the whole family and the whole student. So yes. um, I'm happy to uh, represent Abound in helping the whole student be financially well. Gives you a better idea on how to meet the needs of our families, meet the needs of our kids. Correct. Uh, start a process for financial literacy that's going to impact them not just at the elementary school level, but on up through middle school and high school. That's so right. So long-term impact. Uh, you know, how long have you been with the Bound Credit Union now? Um, I started in September of 2019. And so I got a few months in before the pandemic started. Okay. And, uh, and we entered our partnership with you and with Hardin County Schools. And so it hasn't been long, but it feels like a long, <laughs> long time. time. <laughs> well, you've you been through a lot of changes when you think yeah. about with the uh, the name change yep. uh, and things of like that. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think the changing from Fort Knox Federal Credit Union now to a bound credit union. Uh, what are some of the positives that have come about because of that change? That's a great question. Um, some of the positives and what we were really seeking with the change from Fort Knox Federal Credit Union to a bound credit union was to help the whole community understand that they could be part of the credit union without without being affiliated with the armed forces. Gotcha. We still do so much to support the armed forces. Um, however, now we hope when people see a bound or hear a bound, they feel like it's more open to the community. Gotcha. How many years has the Bound Credit Union been in our community? How many years now? Oh gosh, over 50. Over 50 years. That's yeah. crazy, isn't it? Now, specifically, what is your role and primary focus with the Bound Credit Union? When they brought you there a few years ago, what's your primary goal and focus? Initially, um, it was sharing the good news about our um, digital learning and distance learning programs uh, with our partner EverFi and what that entailed. And it has grown thanks to partnerships like yours. So my title is PR, which is public relations and financial education professional. But again, we've started to assess the needs of our communities and we're seeing that financial wellness piece is a bigger part than what we knew about. So that's the, it's evolving to yes. answer your question. It's yeah. an evolving role now. Uh, it's, it's, it's a big part of a community. When we talk about financial literacy, financial wellness, uh, families that learn how to to save, to budget, you know, to invest, you know, all those things uh, moving forward. We want our kids to have that opportunity here in Hardin County Schools. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Abound Credit Union got involved in financial literacy. Um, I think you kind of answered this, but why did you feel like this program was so important for our community? What was the bottom line here? Why did you say, I want every fifth grade student in Hardin County Schools, <laughs> Hardin County and other school districts to take part in this? What was your mindset behind that? Well, the mindset for that was that Abound is passionate about doing our part to make more possible for members and for the community. So we feel that teaching children how to manage money empowers them. And it also helps them to take home that dialogue. So they're talking about real life financial habits at home and taking away any stigma about talking about it at home. So we hope what they learn in school they, they go home to mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever they happen to have in their family group and, and have those discussions and just ask uh, and just talk about money. That is huge. And how, how many schools are actively involved in this program right now within our region? Within our region, um, we have 20 schools. Wow. And we have over 5,000 students learning about so financial. We, what other counties have been involved in this besides us? Oh, let's see, Taylor County, which is the Campbellsville area. Um, we also have Elizabethtown Independent Schools. Uh, we have some partners here and there in Meade County. 
We're talking with Glasgow right now, okay. uh, Bullitt County, and uh, we have some even uh, in the Louisville area. So this is reaching, uh, you know, not just Hardin County schools, but kids mm -hmm. across this region, which is hugely important. And yeah, Nelson County. I know I'm leaving some out, but um, right. Yeah. But you all targeted fifth grade students with this program, with this Correct. online module program through EverFi. Well, why, why fifth grade? Fifth grade, well, we felt like they were emotionally intelligent enough to retain the information, to understand the information, and then, like I said, to go home and have those conversations. We thought that was really important, and we wanted to catch them before they went to middle school. Um, we also provide, as you know, <laughs> we also provide middle school education. So we have yes. a different set of modules for that. And so we wanted to catch them right before they exited so they'd have some sort of foundation before they went on. Right. When you talk middle. about middle school, you've got our career, career exploration courses that all middle school students are taking part in Correct. this year. Yes. And within those career exploration courses, they've been able to implement some of your uh, modules within those courses and bring, uh, bring on some real life learning opportunities there. So you have fifth grade financial literacy, fifth grade uh, career exploration opportunities. In high school, every student has to take a financial literacy course in order to graduate. So, so really, you know, the financial uh, curriculum is, is taken off here in the state of Kentucky. It's taken off here in Hardin County. And uh, on this segment today, you're also gonna be hearing from Ms. Shalise Packer at New Highland Elementary School. Uh, they've been implementing the program now for two years with Fidelity. And uh, which has been huge. You're going to hear from one of their teachers, uh, and you'll hear in the segment that I think 51 out of 52 students completed the program. Oh wow! Uh, and at their school, and I think the the person that moved ended up completing the program after they moved. So 52 out of 52, and uh, and and two of the families I think had reached back out to her talking about the prizes that you all gave to the students. And I'm going to let you talk about that before I uh, finish that. What, what, talk about those prizes <laughs> that our fifth grade students got. That was huge. Oh, thanks. Uh, we incentivize every learning activity that we have. Should, yes. So not only do we do that in, in the gamification and making it fun when, when students do the modules, but as they complete the modules, and, and I loved hearing that retention rate, that's fantastic. Um, we, uh, we give these high quality certificates, awards, um, I believe we also gave them, oh gosh, what did earbuds. we give your students? Yeah. We gave them Ear earbuds. earbuds. Yes. And uh, my favorite thing of all is we want them to have a strong foundation. So Abound provided $5, five bucks, five Abound bucks for them to open their savings account. Um, we want them again to have, we want to remove every barrier that a student would have to starting their own savings account. Right, and the teacher you're gonna be hearing from in this segment later on uh, she talked about two of her families that have already reached out to her saying they've been to the Abound Credit Union. They've opened up their savings account with their free $5 uh, certificate. And, Yay, uh, can I cheer for oh, that? We, we can, we, we can. And, and I, I love that. And I encourage that, that principal and the teacher to continue to reach out and communicate with families. Your students didn't just come on with a sheet of paper with $5 on it to, to, to put it on their mirror, to right. throw in the garbage. Every fifth grade student in Hardin County Schools has an opportunity to open up this savings account and maybe develop a plan of uh, doing their chores at home and earn an extra $5 <laughs> a month at home maybe. And you say, well, where's $5 gonna go a month? Well, 12 times five is 60. So, I mean, that's $60 a year. You're putting in a savings account, you know, from maybe doing your chores at home and, and earning money and earning interest and start having some of those conversations. And, but uh, just talking to the teacher about their, uh, their module on budgeting and some of the activities they're doing after the modules are complete and uh, what I would call follow through and doing extensions with this material is gonna be powerful. And actually, uh, Ms. Packer and the principal, Ms. Hall, uh, will be at our board meeting in February to talk about uh, what they've done with financial literacy in their school and the impact that it's having and, and kind of a next steps kind of, kind of uh, approach of saying we've done this two years, how can we align our curriculum more effectively mm -hmm. uh, to kind of talk about some of those concepts you know, within while we're teaching certain things. Instead of just doing it in isolation, uh, making sure we're connecting some of those, uh, those topics and, and really making it meaningful for the students. And, and I don't miss all, I don't want to take it, miss all. She, she's going to be on this as well. I, I'm just so excited <laughs> about it, you know. I can't wait to hear, uh, to hear yeah. all about that. And, yeah. and that's what we're looking for is that integration. And I, I want to highlight how our programming, not only in person in the classroom, our presentations and gameplay, but also our, our partnership 
with EverFi and those digital learning modules that they are meant to meet the curriculum. They are meant to meet the Kentucky standards because yeah. we don't want it to be a standalone. We want it to be a complement or something yeah, well that a teacher said. can create and build around so they can, um, they can do career exploration. They can talk about careers. They can talk, as, and I love that too, that um, someone took the and opened the $5 savings account and they were able to start having those real life conversations about how to manage money. Right, it's already happening. So I, I appreciate, appreciate y'all's partnership. I uh, appreciate the Mountain Credit Union for sponsoring financial literacy for all of our fifth grade students and our middle school programs dur during a career, ex career exploration has been huge. But anything else you wanna add? Anything you wanna add on, on your behalf? Oh, okay, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we do have digital learning tools for ages 13 and up, um, and Abound offers a mobile-first interactive financial education platform, as I mentioned. And so what we're finding is we could have a 22-year-old that's at the same level as a 13-year-old when it comes to knowledge about finance, finances and managing money. So we have a library on our website and modules. And again, I said mobile first. So if you want to take five minutes, you're sitting in a drive through whatever you're doing, you're just sitting idle. You can go to aboundcu.com and click the Learn tab. And once you get there, you can take five minutes and take a module and increase your knowledge. Okay, so it's right there on your it's website? It's right there on, yeah, aboundcu.com. Click the Learn tab. It's on your phone. And, and take that five minutes and do something with it. Do okay. something productive with it. That's good information. Thank you for sharing that because I didn't realize that yeah. even young adults can get on there and yeah. participate. So yeah, outstanding. Yeah, take your phone and, and give it a try. Gotcha. Well, that's all the questions I have for today. Unless there's anything else you want to add? Um, um, I'm excited to get back in the classroom, and uh, we, we started with gameplay and getting the students really pumped about what they had learned and measuring learning in the classroom in March of 2019. Was it was no, March of 2020, right. and so I'm excited for us to get back in those fifth grade classrooms. And start talking to kids. That's, yeah. what, that's what it's all about, is being with the kids. Yep. Had a few bumps in a row with some NTI and AB schedule here and there. It's going, going really well. Your team uh, is doing fantastic. The teachers Thank are you. rocking it. Yep. Uh, the administrators are rocking it. We appreciate it. And the, the parents being flexible with us this year. And uh, it's we're, we're, making, we're making it work as we always do here in Hardin County Schools. So uh, thank you all for enjoying this session uh, of Impact and Learning, Empowering Students, and we'll see you next time. Ms. Packer, thank you for being here with us today on Impacting Learning and Empowering Students. I want to specifically thank you. Uh, I know because last year you guys were really um, Really one of the first schools to fully implement the financial literacy program. I think we had three schools last year. You were one of those three. This year we moved that into all of, 12 of our elementary schools doing this program with our fifth graders. So first of all, thank you for the implementation of a program that's going to impact students and student learning moving forward and, and help them learn more about real life. But if you could just kind of, you know, uh, why do you tell us why you feel the financial literacy program is critical for our students to take part in? Why is it so critical? So thank you. What a great opportunity to showcase, showcase the great things going on in Hardin County. So I really first have to give kudos to my teachers and my students. When we began the process last year, it was a smoother, easier process. We were super excited about the math witness that our students were talking about, the 21st century skills that they were embarking upon. So it was, it was just a win-win situation. And so that's why we believe and we just know wholeheartedly that this is a great program for our students moving forward outside of the classroom. Now, now Ms. Packer, you think about the things we deal with as adults, yes. uh, having bank accounts, yes. uh, paying for cars, yes. having house payments, uh, borrowing money, yes. uh, saving money, uh, all those things that we want kids to be financial literate. Did, what, what did you feel like this program offered in terms of some real life experiences for the kids? Did it touch on some of those things yes. in conjunction with the math content? If you could just address that. First. Yes, so let's talk about that financial literacy and that witness for a second. So the students, this was their first opportunity to actually talk about saving money and why saving money is so important. We can move past the opportunity of candy. We talked about houses, we talked about homes. We even had some conversations about stock market. So if we think about that for a second, having conversations about the stock market in fifth grade. So we're planting some just great seeds for these 21st century students moving on into middle school. So it was just a great opportunity for these students to embark on some vocabulary that they really don't use. 
Right. You know, you talk about math all the time. A lot of times we're just solving problems. Yeah. We're, just, we're just learning basic facts. But this is actually real world problem solving. I hear you talk about stock market and investing. You know, we want kids to learn how to, one, be a productive member of society. One, seek job opportunities they have a passion for. And when they earn that money, learn how to save that money, learn how to invest that money, learn how to help that money grow. And that's part of being a good steward with your money that you do earn someday. So I really, I really appreciate the, the impact this is going to have on our students moving forward. Just, just, just planting that seed of the thinking of what it takes uh, to be financial literate uh, in today's world. And I guess thinking about last year, you all being one of the first schools that did, did this program. This year, you know, we got to do it again. But what do you see as maybe next steps for this program? Uh, what suggestions might, might you have for us to make it more successful for the students? Any suggestions you all talked about maybe with your staff? Yes, well, Ms. Hall and I, we just had this conversation and we talked about maybe perhaps bringing maybe some middle schoolers back and they can talk about you know, some real world applications, what they did over the summer, some conversations that they had with their siblings, some conversations that they had with their teachers, some conversations that they had with their parents, or our current fifth graders, after they, you know, begin the initial process, talking to the fourth graders. So once again, maybe small steps forward with the vocabulary. So I think, well, I don't think I know students, for some strange reason, they learn better sometimes from other students. So having a conversation from peer to peer, I think that will be our next steps moving forward. I totally agree. This has to be a process that takes shape uh, at each level that these kids uh, move into. You talk about now with, with financial literacy in fifth grade, you talk about the career path opportunities, you start talking about in middle school. Then you talk about every, every student that goes to high school now has to take a financial uh, literacy course uh, you know, on top of uh, you know, what they're seeing down at this level. So we're trying to, we're trying to vertically you know, plan this process where kids don't just see it in fifth grade, they don't revisit ever again. It's going to be part of what we do here in Hardin County Schools and teaching students to become financial literate. So I want to thank Ms. Packer for being here with us today and uh, thank you all for joining us. Well, Ms. Hall, I want to thank you for being here today to join us here on uh, our program here to discuss, uh, you know, financial literacy. We've heard from Holly Sexton here today talking about a bound credit union, how they've sponsored this program for all of our fifth graders here in the district, which is going to have a huge impact. We've got a chance to talk to Ms. Packer. You've heard her speak about uh, the next steps and where this is going with this program moving forward. And this school's done this program for two years in a row, one of only a few schools that's done that for us. And we're glad this is starting to spread. But I always talk about a program is just a program until you really talk, start talking about implementation. How are we going to get this out to the students? How are we going to, you know, uh, teach them financial literacy so they can really take it home and apply it to their real life? So I guess the first question I have is how did you go about you know, along with your fifth grade team about implementing financial literacy, you know, with your students. How'd you go uh, about doing that? Sorry. Uh, well, this year, uh, last year, Ms. Rupchan taught social studies and she did the program. So this is my first year with it. And because we started back with um, NTI and your time is real precious in the classroom um, right now. So um, I started doing it on Wednesdays when the group A would come and the next week group B, we, um, because we did a, uh, do a lot of intervention when they come and so I could have them on the program when I work with another small group and then my club teacher could, if they needed help, she could help them as well. So we started off um, in the classroom with it and then we went to NTI and so that it became more of the Wednesdays was a, you know, a no go. So we um, would, after we did our Google meets in the morning, um, we would break into small groups. So it was easy to say, okay, you work, you three work on financial literacy while I'm working with these three with math. And then they come back and meet me so I could help them. But that, that just worked out a whole lot better. So it wasn't, um, it was kind of a weekly thing, but it just depended on what the kids needed with a small group, how much they got each week. But, you know, we had it completed by December. Well, let's talk about that a little bit more. I mean, I, you mentioned that you would try to use your Wednesdays during the AB schedule to kind of make sure you hit one group each week to complete this prior to winter break. Um, this is primarily a, uh, a computer-based program, mm -hmm. but it sounds like to me you actually did more than just the computer-based part. You actually tried to do some small group work with that. Yeah. So I guess from a curriculum mapping perspective, were you able to make connections with math concepts you're teaching within the curriculum? Let's so kind of discuss that a little uh, bit. Yes, there's one uh, module where the kids are given um, a certain amount of money and they have to buy a baby bed, a stroller, a bottle, and a, and a toy. And they all have prices. 
but they do not have enough money to purchase all those. So they have to go to different characters and try to borrow like the wood and the saw to make the, make the crib. But when they go, the character will, um, will say, well, last time I let you borrow something, you broke it. So you have to earn their trust back. So that was, that was kind of neat to, for the kids to see, okay, you may need these things and not have the money, so you may need to ask somebody for help, you know, help them build something or help you get something. But if you've treated them bad or you've messed up their stuff, so that was, that was a good way uh, to put it in. Um, budgeting was a real hard thing. We did a, try to do an activity <laughs> from one of the budgeting mo uh, modules and you know, it was like, okay, they get birthday money. So you, know, you want to save that up or allowance and you had to you know, buy your certain things that you actually need and then put money off to the side for emergencies. And so that was because they didn't want to put money to the side. Well, I've got the money to spend now, but okay, your phone breaks. You know, everybody's got to have their cell phone. Where are you going to get the money? So that, that was, th those things were neat. They probably had to start thinking about things like a savings account. Yes. Think about ha having a uh, emergency fund to be able to pay for certain things when they do come upon something like that. Uh, and I, I guess that's what I want to ask is, you know, have you heard from, you know, some of the parents concerning the program? Have the students talked about some of the prizes? Because I know at Bound Credit Union did a great job of uh, supplying the prizes for the students. You talked about uh, savings. You talked about having that emergency fund. I think at Bound Credit Union, I think you've got something there in your hand you'd like to share that they provided for every fifth grade student here in our district that completed this program. And before you answer that question, how many students did you have that did the program here through New Highland? How many fifth graders? In, in person, or uh, 52. So you had 52 fifth graders and did all 52 fifth graders get an opportunity to complete it? Were just were a few shy of that? Or? Uh, there was one that, because she was gone, but has completed it since then, yes. Okay, so all, fifth, all 51 out of 52 or 52 out of 52, that's amazing. Or the follow through with that. So I'll let you kind of share some of those prizes. Uh, well, one thing they get um, is a certificate showing that they completed the program. Abound also gives them uh, five dollars. Uh, they can go in with their parent and open up a savings account, and this is their first five dollars to go in there, which is a great thing. And then one thing that really helped a lot was um, they all got their own set of earbuds, which was great because when we use our headphones, you have to cl clean them so much every day. So now they all have their own. It fits in their pencil pouch. And so everybody can hear and they love these. Did, uh, did you get any feedback from the parents on those prizes? They say, boy, I got this home today or got delivered and we actually went and opened up an account. Did a parent give you any feedback on uh, that or maybe any of the students potentially? Oh, the kids love them because they, um, well, cause you know, they're 10, 11 years old. They want to have, you know, earbuds. So, but they, um, it's real easy for them to put in their ears and you know walk around if they sit on the floor or what have you. I did have um, a few parents contact me thanking me because they thought that I had bought them for the child. I was like, no, no, your child completed a program and this is one of the things you know Abound gave them. So the parents were were uh, thankful for that. And I know of two that have gone and um, done their sa uh, did their savings account. We want and we want to keep encouraging those kids oh, to yeah. do that. And, you know, even weekly now that we've completed this, hey, how many of you guys got a chance to go to a bound credit unit and start your savings account? And I think maybe if we get some emails, communication out to parents to realize that, hey, this is not just a certificate that's going to sit on your, uh, you know, on your dresser at home. This needs to go to the bank and, and start your, your savings account. What about the students? What was, uh, obviously, when students are asked to do something different at times, something new, sometimes that can be intimidating, uh, especially some uh, especially computer module program sometimes can be confusing, but what was their feedback back to you at all, if any, about this program? Was there some positive, were there some concerns, or what did you hear from the students? I would say really the only concern that um, they had was on some of them, they, um, you have to get your person and take it to this here, and they were having trouble with go, knowing where to go, because during uh, NTI, they would present their screen and I'd have to you know, walk them through it. Um, but that's, that was a, you know, that was an easy fix. Um, the programs, yeah, we um, actually next week, uh, I get menus from around town, uh, different restaurants. So the kids are going to have to do that to go and order food, but they're going to have their budget. So we're trying to wrap some of what they learn with the finance, just, you know, as, as, as we came to real life situations, yes. So overall, they like the program. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And I, I can honestly say, I, from listening to Ms. Hall today, obviously going to a non-traditional instruction model where we were at home for about six weeks, that caused a little bit of interruption, but you know, great teachers do what great, great teachers do. And uh, she found ways to implement the program with the students at home, create small group opportunities with her through the computer stream, through Google Meets. So I guess what I'm saying is we didn't let uh, that step, uh, you know, 
get in our way of doing what was best for kids and still helping them with this opportunity. So thank you for being, if you said 51 out of 52 and the other person finished when she left 52 out of 52, uh, that's, that's a huge success. So uh, kudos to you and kudos to New Holland Elementary School. Kudos to Bound Credit Union and also to all of Hardin County Schools. Every fifth grader in our district has an opportunity to, to be a part of this financial literacy program. We want everybody to be a finisher. Some had to finish after winter break uh, due to the NTI period, but I'm about finishing. I'm not worried about a time limit at this point in time. I just want every kid to have this opportunity. So uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Sexton. Thank you, Ms. Packer. And thank you, Ms. Hall, for being here down impacting learning and empowering students. Uh, go Hardin County Schools.